That looks like we're ready to begin. I will call the meeting to order. This is May 12, 2014, 9 a.m. And we'll go to Clark County Commission's court to court. We'll first have a prayer and uh, <laughs> Julie will do the prayer, then we'll do the play. Thanks. Heavenly Father, once again, thank you for the opportunity to gather together as a county lord. Um, we just ask that you be with the commissioners today as they make important decisions for the county and for the taxpayers and the county board. And um, we ask that you be with each uh, department head and elected official and all the county employees, Lord, and that we may do the job um, to your will. We thank you for being with the firefighters yesterday um, during the fires. We ask that you uh, be with those people and comfort those who have lost their homes, Lord, and help us together as a community to come together and help them. Just be with us and guide, guide us throughout this week, each and every day, Lord. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 first three and then the next two the motion and uh, motion and second and the vote were taken okay yeah okay that's good Sorry. i make a motion that we accept the minute this presented okay. second motion approved and second mm -hmm. all in favor passes five zero item number two vouchers to consider an act upon the approval of the payment of vouchers Processed by the county auditor office for the period of April 23rd, 2014 through May 6th, 2014. Those uh, items of uh, checks numbered 155314 through 155572 and wire transfers 373 through 377, the total amount of $2,023,922.11. Motion to approve. Second. I'll second. That's good. Ready discussion? I have one question for the court. Page 18 of 35, check number 155558. Uh, the vendor is written to the Muse of 1100 Repair and Add Clear Edging, and then the line cuts off. I'm just not sure what that is. <coughs> That's to uh, 10 chairs that were repaired in the, one of the district courts. Uh, they, had, they had torn because of the railing. And so we went in and added this, this hard plastic around that just so they could tear it in um, So that's for 10 chairs all together. So it's about a little over a million chairs. Okay, thank you. The only one I have is um, on page 22. The, uh, Differences in the prices for the MGM or MCM Grand Hotel will just uh, a bunch of different prices on there. For, for what, what's going on here? What, what's the deal? Because the procurement cards are limited to five hundred dollars a day, I think they each went down and, and paid a little bit every day. The room rate was the same for the entire state. It's just they charged a little bit every day to save them. Okay, well, it's just kind of, kind of odd to see all those prices on there. And you will see on uh, class four one, they did overcharge him a hundred and fifty five. Yeah, I saw that was corrected. Yes, so, so again, uh, daily uh, 
paying the allocated room rate versus at the end of the conference? Uh, because their card has the profit dollar per transaction more than they could pay all of them. Remember that hotel? I uh, that was more like stayed in here. Oh, man. If they got to a barrel. Do we have any other uh, questions? Okay. I have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Passes by zero. Item number uh, three, insurance report. Okay, do you have any additional on that? No. So recognize. <clears throat> Item four, salary survey, to uh, hear an update on the salary survey provided by Texas Association of Counties. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the last commissioner's court, uh, I was asked to go to Texas Association of Counties and bring back some information as to uh, the type of assistance that they might be able to provide counties uh, regarding uh, salary surveys, uh, audits of positions, salary structure, that sort of thing. I did contact Michelle Arsenault with Texas Association of Counties. Pat does not provide any kind of assistance to counties along those lines at all anymore. In years past, they had contracted with Waters um, Group and provided information to conduct a salary survey but that also has been stopped some years ago they just don't participate in any kind of salary survey or any assistance in salary restructuring uh, for counties at all they don't get involved in that arena now michelle indicated to me that while she was with wichita county uh, they self-audited positions um, and she talked with me um, very briefly about that process. She did offer very kindly to spend some time um, at her next visit in July here to talk about what that process looked like. Um, they used a point factor method to do that. Um, she said it was a, a tedious process, took uh, quite a lot of time. Uh, but they were very successful with it and because they self-audited those positions it kept the cost down for them and they also instituted a policy to support that endeavor and uh, throughout her tenure as HR director there they, they maintained that policy and adhered to the salary structure that was put in place Michelle indicated um, also she referred me to, to Bob uh, Rizzoli who is a recently retired HR director for Kamal County. I did talk to Bob. Um, he said that um, Kamal County had uh, gone through this process twice, once in 2002, and then again about four years later, with uh, the first being with uh, Ray and Associates, and um, then the second um, with another uh, organization with the same results um, they had some positions that were topped out uh, or deemed at the top of their structure or beyond and so those positions were frozen and they brought the other positions in line they also had um, a, a very structured uh, group and step type uh, salary structure that was adhered to throughout the county um, Bob currently in his retirement works with a consulting group um, that's uh, called Whirling Associates and it's Dr. Steve Whirling heads that up. I did talk with Dr. Whirling as well. Uh, he and Bob both indicated that in our situation job descriptions should be the first um, order of business to, to review and audit those job descriptions uh, and then from once we get the job descriptions nailed down then we could begin to look at salaries and, and our salary placement and where our positions fall within that um, we can either 
uh, do that uh, utilizing a third party or we can do that internally. Uh, either way, uh, it's going to take some time uh, to process that for, for our folks and for a third party if we chose to go that route. Um, also, I put a request out on the listserv to ask across the state, what, what have other counties done? I got just a handful of those responses. You see them listed there. Um, everyone that responded uh, utilized a third party to go through this process, and the costs range from 30000 to 200000 um, to implement uh, and utilize a third party to implement a salary structure. Um, Lubbock County is currently in the process of getting some soft quotes out from uh, Waters Group and uh, the Hay Group, both their offices in Dallas. Those numbers should be back this week or next, and um, Greg George with Lubbock County has graciously offered to share those figures with us um, when he receives them. Um, when I put the request out on the search, I got a lot of responses from across the state. Uh, please share that information with me when you get it. There appears to be a lot of uh, interest across the state in this process. Um, Michelle indicated that what she has seen much of the time, you know, either way works well, and she, but she's seen the county spend a lot of money um, implementing through or um, contracting with a third party and then choosing not to fully implement uh, the recommendations. I think, that be a uh, first of all, I thank you for your thorough uh, review process. That helps a lot. Um, taking up on that note from Michelle, indicating that uh, the start off is that the counties did a, uh, I guess, a, a thorough investigation of job descriptions. So, was that job description primarily uh, uh, driven by the county itself, or was that a third party? Or was the uh, department heads got together and then basically uh, came up with a job description of those positions and aided to those uh, departments, and it just kind of Joey's spread it out uh, countywide or? At Wichita County, it was done internally. Some of the other counties that utilized a third party, it was done by the third party. Uh, as I visited with uh, Dr. Worley, um, we would have the option, if we chose to go with the third party, we would likely have the option to uh, internally provide a part of the service in order to keep costs down. The job descriptions might likely be one portion of that that, that we would uh, could manage internally, regardless of whether you utilize a third party to contract that or not, it would still take um, us within the county, the department director, elected officials, uh, and the HR department internally to drive that uh, job description audit because no one from the outside or even outside the departments are going to be able to audit right. the positions within each department. That's going to have to come from within that department. So are there lessons to be taken from these respective counties that, uh, that we uh, converse with them, what they learned, what they wanted out of that mm -hmm. third party education and maybe utilize some of those uh, uh, Things that they've learned and, and, and put into action rather than actually going with the report? Um, absolutely. I think there are always lessons to be learned. I think the, the information that I gathered, at least in the, the brief conversation that I've had uh, through this process, um, was one of the greatest pitfalls is to embark um, on a study, either spend time on the study. Uh, internally, doing it internally, or um, contracting with a third party and then either not implementing the changes or not adhering to the, the recommended structures once they're put in place. I think that's the, the greatest 
Well, I have one time. Two, it, I'm sorry, let me get one finalist for I have the same moment. If you get that up, uh, in July, I think it would be noteworthy to pull Michelle in mm -hmm. and visit with uh, her during the time that she's here just to see what we might be able to mm -hmm. learn from that. Uh, and, uh, and then maybe rally up the, uh, I know that the last time we visited on this issue, all the departments certainly want to be a part of it as well they should be and uh, try to get some uh, maybe a, uh, an ad hoc type of discussion on committee together to start generating some things that we're looking for and developing some criteria for us. The job is going to be to each one of those as we can start as a preliminary to that visit. And I will um, add in terms of perspective for the core and the controls of our existing practices, I'm looking at just two, two positions just in general terms. Uh, one being a secretary position, and over the last years, four years, this position has moved up ten thousand dollars. It started at thirty thousand and is now up to thirty-nine thousand. Part of that is with incremental changes that come to the court. Another position in the same time span has increased thirteen thousand dollars. So this is happening um, often in now, very small you, increments. Now, are you speaking across the board, Commissioner, as a secretary per se? Across I'm looking at two particular positions that were increased, and um, and I'll be happy to to make a copy. Gary provided this information to me. I'll be happy to make a copy and share this to the court. But for me, it adds perspective in terms of what we're doing today. Um, there's definitely a need to peel back those layers, if you will because those increases, I think, are very difficult to sustain across the board. Um, and the core, often we get them in small increments. We don't see a $10,000 increase. We don't see a 13,000 increase, but this is happening. And they're very real numbers, and I'll be happy to share that and make that part of the record for today. My question, <laughs> and maybe you've answered it. What is the purpose? What is our purpose? We're asking you to do this. As I understand it, um, the purpose for reviewing this this information and looking towards um, an audit of positions would be to bring our current or existing salary structure um, into an organized. Um, set uh, and then place salaries within that structure according to the, the actual work of those positions and hopefully at that point um, establish a process, procedure, policy to, because to, so, to maintain that structure um, down the road. As, As we feel, some positions are being overpaid and some positions are being underpaid. Because there's do no our, structure. Do our employees have a problem? Some have voiced uh, some issues of concerns, and they have been discussed in uh, doing budgetary process. Yeah. Uh, inequities uh, is more, right. I think, where the voice is coming from. Inequities of pay scales and positions. And certainly, if I'm on the high end of that, um, I may have a different perspective of whether I'm on the low end of that. Well, sure. It seems to me at budget time, you're always going to have those discrepancies that are going to pop up. Um, and a you know a structure uh, that you're talking about, I think it's going to be hard to define. It, uh, it, it, would, it would be difficult. And to go out and even consider a third party and doing this for us, I think is ludicrous. I don't think we need to do that. We could certainly be able to do I'll something like something. that. With sure. I'm just curious as to, like, if I have a, like the positions you're talking about, I don't know um, what office they come from, but just say that through this salary survey that we find out that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just say one of the ladies in our office does the same job that maybe that salary line isn't um, funded as much. So through that salary survey process, is that is that gonna make y'all be bound to raise that position to that particular I think I don't, I, I'm saying it I, I don't necessarily think that, that uh, ties us into doing that. I think that's sort of discretionary between the departments and what they have in regards to that, that budget of what may be uh, coming in. And, uh, those things, I think, need to be discussed, though. And uh, I think you need to have some uh, 
some liberty there, not uh, just uh, be a uh, rough or um, arbitrarily just across the board. And uh, if that makes sense, it, it, I think it has to be the department on discussion as far as what you may have me to be different than another department from some concerns in regards to that. Okay, yeah, I mean, because currently we just work, you know, obviously we're only able to work with, within our budget what's, right. you know, what's allowed during that time. So I was just, just kind of curious. I've never really been through one of those. So just questions. The first layer um, of a, a salary audit, if you will, would be to just, just to identify those positions that uh, potentially fall below or fall above or where that inequity is internally uh, just to define it and and be aware and know it's there and then it would be of course up to uh, what the budget would permit and, and what this court sees fit to any adjustments that you make. Yeah, and I certainly see that as a great preliminary step and to Commissioner Church's question is um, the inequities that either exist or don't exist. So the information being available for the court uh, to review that from a global perspective or department perspective, because it could be, you know, there is not, it, everything appears in line in this department versus this department. What is it that is making that difference? I know yeah, my, we have a couple others that would like to just to kind of show the line to help you we went through this salary survey two times the departments right now except for one of the lands is the only one that i know in the county that probably has not done this we've already established the job descriptions we created all of that that was part of the hr department before you came on so a lot of that information is already there i know my department has it so it may be just as easy as to gather that information once you choose to move forth you know in order to look at the salaries we've already done a lot is that yeah. about 10 to 12 years ago, Mike, that that was done? Yeah. The last note I have. The last one. Yeah. But as far as the job description, the job. some of them needs to be changed because right. people has changed, but I think- We have a starting point. Yeah, yeah. Well, we months point. and months. This did not happen over just two or three months. Right. It took us- This is internal, it wasn't that, no, we didn't use a third party. We did it internal to establish the job descriptions and then we went out of house, but then to help us evaluate the comparison of this county versus this county to make it fair. Okay. And I think um, Michelle can probably help us in that line. Right. And, uh, and, and what you have initially already done and spoken to a number of, of the county HRs, and that has helped uh, quite a bit as well. I agree with the uh, Commissioner because we don't need to be driving the issue as far as outside. Uh, uh, consulting or contracting when we can do a lot of things in-house and it sounds to me like you've already done that. Leanne, you have some comment on me? I, I do. I have a question. Um, just like Mike, I know we've done this in the past and then we got everybody on the scale and then through the years, department heads can make decisions to not increase this person's pay and give that increase to someone else or, you know, diversify the funds that way in their salaries. So even if you do this again, what's gonna stop over a period of time this not happening? Because can you, Dave, uh, this is a question that I have. Can you tell an, ele an, effect, an elected official that they can't um, disperse those funds as they choose? Yes, they, the commissioners can, but, but I do think you're making a very good point. One of the reasons this creep happens is because of the way salaries have been increases have been done in the past and and uh, instead of like in, like many times instead of giving when a when an increase has been given instead of giving across the board you give discretion to department heads so department heads have gone and scattered this money out sometimes a lot to this employee and little of this one and that's where your discrepancies come in in my in my opinion now the commissioners have the right to do that but that a lot of this discrepancy is caused by the way the the Salary increases in and the I think, I, and, court and, and, I, and I think correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, they, that has happened primarily during the budgetary process as far as the incremental increase of uh, well, you know, COLA or, or the dipping up. Has, it, has that happened uh, extensively beyond that? Yes. Yes. And yes. if the department has an empty position and they want or someone paid less than salary, sometimes they take those funds and move to 
uh, the example of the country. Yes. And that's where the huge percentage increases start to occur. So I think it's a valid question, and, and certainly uh, once, if, if it is a, a task force or a committee that starts to look into that, I mean, I think we are certainly jumping the gun in terms of how to establish that and answer those questions. I don't think that's the intent of this discussion. It's really to identify if there are inequities and what is a global perspective of that. And to Commissioner Church's question, there have been employees that have voiced concern about the inequities in particular. So from my perspective, you know, I would like to see us at least look at that and know how, how many inequities we have or how significant of a problem it is. And maybe the answer is that it's not, but at least we know that information. What are you and, and please. Well, you know, I haven't thought about this a whole lot, but the first thing that comes to my mind is that, you know, we want, we always say, let's be fair. Well, what does that mean? How can you be fair? And do we want to encourage people to do a good job? Uh, we, got, we need to have some flexibility to be able to reward where it needs to be rewarded and that sort of thing. But anyway, um, I can, I have no problem looking at it. I, I hey, Roger? Well, I just want to make a comment on, you know, like my department, if you got three truck drivers, let's say you got three truck drivers, you got one, if you pay them all the same, you got one that's not as good as this truck driver over here, but yet he's not a good truck driver, but he'd get paid as much as a real good one. The, the goal or the objective of salary structure is not necessarily to pay every like position identically. The goal is to have a range that those positions fall within. And then within that range, there you have the opportunity to pay top performers more than non-performers. But the goal okay, is well, to I stay within the range for that position. The inequity occurs when you have positions that are paid above or below the ranges for those positions. That's, yeah, and that's exactly right. I think that's what the, the area of focus that we're we were looking at. I think whenever you have a percentage raise, uh, for example, my department is, and probably Julie's being clerks, are considered one of the lowest, and 3% of 25,000 is not very much considered 3% of 40,000, which may be a secretary in another office. So I think that you ought to look at the inequities of that. I would you agree, Kate, it goes back to the job descriptions and the range that reflects that particular job description. I say that correctly. Exactly, yes, that, that each position, whether it's titled a clerk or whether it be titled a court administrator or anything else, would need to be reviewed according to what the duties are for that position and then the range established for that set of duties uh, and then strive to maintain uh, those positions within the ranges uh, in which they fall. Would it not help if you had a maybe a possibility like step increases where you know each three years each four years whatever it might be that uh, an individual that uh, is doing their job the way it's supposed to be done would reach a level and reach that next step and and move in steps that's absolutely one way to do it you can set it up in a graded step where there are nine ten eleven steps within a salary structure uh, to allow a person to move through those steps, or you can do a minimum, midpoint, maximum. The thing about the steps is though you know well, the next level, what it's what gonna be, what it's gonna cost, and you don't have to go through this stuff about, well, this employee doing a better job than this employee, but uh, at least with a step uh, <clears throat> program, you can, you can monitor it. We can do it as, uh, in our budgets, as, we, as the budget comes around, and, just a lot easier to be to be able to process it know where we're at. Once that salary structure is established, right. then you can um, establish a policy to move through those steps. And I think to our point, there is no structure today. Right. We don't have, uh, we have whatever's budgeted for the position, for each individual position within each department's budget. That's some, that's some work, at least. 
Any other comments? We actually sure. do, we actually do have the step increases in our the, the commission. So is three it, to you several years ago. Does that make it is it an issue for you and your people to just you know what's gonna happen? So yeah, we have we have some that are the only thing I don't like about it is we have some that are one and two years and we have some that are two and four years. But we do have we have two step increases in the I never heard of the problem from the sheriff's office about it. So I really do. <laughs> Anybody else want to come in? Okay, Sandra. I was, I'm, I've been here long enough that I went through that uh, survey and we used Ray and Associates at that time. And um, one of the things that came up that was a real uh, issue with a lot of departments was going out and getting. Um, salaries from different counties that supposedly they're the same size as we are or whatever but the problem was is they were very different in what they handled and how many cases they had and um, what departments they had they may have um, they may be county-wise personnel I mean uh, the people who live in the county may be approximately the same, but their county is totally different. But as an example, for in Mike's case, look at how many buildings we have to take care of. And other counties may, they may have as many people, but they may only have one building. So it makes a whole lot of difference, and you can't just go on what another county does or what they make. I don't because I, I saw that uh, discussion and it was a big one. And, um, and then also, uh, you have to think about how has our county uh, grown in uh, like new technology? Do we want to dis discount that? Or do we want to consider those people who have uh, the education and have the knowledge goes with that and pay somewhat accordingly to what the rest of the world uh, pays those in those positions. So I think those are some things to think about that are a little different than, than just straight across the board. And, and they did look at like a base salary and then steps when we did this and I don't know what happened to that. That's not around me. I, I think that, uh, yeah, those are, those are all good points, which uh, uh, leads me to believe that we need to develop a committee to, to, to initiate this process. So would it be fair to say, Commissioner, that we prepared for Michelle's visit in July and would give us some lead time to look at the holistic view of how the salary ranges fall today? Um, by department, or would you, I, you're suggesting a committee to start to evaluate? You no, know, I, I agree. I think we need to start prepping for Michelle's visit, but I think even beyond that, uh, Mike has already indicated, and it seems to be in uh, agreement that we've already started the process. So let, let's just get where we pick up from where we uh, stopped or where we what we have already, and convene a committee to discuss some of these issues because a lot of the questions that I've heard today are very pertinent, very relevant uh, questions that's critical to the whole issue. So uh, it sounds like every department will be a part of this process, and uh, uh, let's just uh, uh, let's, let's move forward. We've been talking about this for a number of years. Let's just do it. Let's just uh, create this, this uh, call it whatever you want to, like a committee, a task force, or whatever. But let's just go ahead and, uh, and, uh, and, and move forward with it. So that would be my suggestion. And uh, I make motion that we would uh, uh, develop a, a committee or or ad hoc committee, or we can I do that? Well, wait a minute. Or the, can, can they take an action on that day? That's what you should do. I don't believe it's reported that way. I think they probably just wait. Something, something like this, you probably should wait until the next one. The way it's written, it's just not written that yeah, way. It's, it's, it's just not written that day. Okay. But I'll, I'll right. make sure we get it on in the next night, the next meeting. I, ordinarily, I might say, uh, you know, And I, you know, I don't know, but I think probably to be safe because the And what my voice was not going to be to name any individuals to actually was still make a committee, but to have one that I would be with uh, that. Uh, so uh, that would be the next meeting. For the next meeting, we could have an action item to, to I mean, you're, to, I guess, actually name people. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, I, I just want to get started. We, I, mean, I, I think that's a part of We made suggestions, maybe. <laughs> is, Commissioner, isn't there an existing HR committee? There is that. Man. I just don't know if this would fall under any, a committee um, that exists. And we don't have to decide that today, just something that I, wanted, I had a thought here. Oh, we can wait. Good all right. Okay. Item number four, so no action taken at this time. Thank you. Item five. The uh, budget amendments consider an act upon the approval of budget amendments for the current fiscal year. Okay, first of all, I think that's a correction on um, item number two. Under the treasurer here, it says uniforms that should actually be one and two are just reclassification of the new department. Three is new funding coming in that was donated to the fire department. Where did that grant come from here? Uh, what's this grant? Is it $8,400? $8,400. Yeah. Yeah. That's for uh, turnouts from the Texas Forest Service. We bought it. We maxed out on how much they'll pay us on it. That their maximum is that is that eighty four hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. Last two items actually coincide with the agenda item number eight on the software, which is for election administration. Um, on that item, item six. Are we taking 71,000 and moving it? Or on behalf of the total fault? I thought the total was going to be 35, 85. It is. We're going to take 35. We're asking to take 35,000 out of the elections that we moved to the voter registration fund. Can we either vote on that separately after we hear um, item eight? On the two items five and six. Or here, I need first. Let's do that. We'll pass this for a moment. We want to do the rest of it. We can do one through four. I have a motion for items one through four. I move that we accept the uh, budget amendments items one, two, three, and four. Second. All in favor? Passes five zero. And item number six. Park County projects to hear a report on various Park County projects and take any action necessary. Mike. The uh, report that I've given you, uh, please stop me as I go through this if you have any questions or concerns. How did you sneak up on the agenda on the Item number uh, category number one, the uh, Texas Historic Commission projects. Uh, item number two is where we've had the change. We have completed the project, all the punch list. Uh, I'll be working with Kerry's office hopefully within the next week in order to process the request to the Texas Historic Commission to get our supplemental funding uh, refund given back to the county on our <coughs> portion. Uh, second item, uh, the uh, courthouse preservation phase three project outstanding warranty items. I know you'll be going into executive session on that in a few moments. The second page of your report there gives you those nine claims that are uh, still pending right now. Uh, one item that is not mentioned out of there is warranty claim number 64. This is one I've been working with a local contractor on. We have uh, already received uh, approval from the manufacturer to uh, replace all the costs in this building, the ceilings on all roof levels. Uh, we've established a schedule and we'll be starting that here within the next few weeks. Substantial completion, I presume, you'll discuss that in the next in your executive meeting. The uh, next category, the uh, Santa Fe elevator 
ship project. Uh, we contractors ordered the parts. We were waiting on a notification back from them on the lead time. The route of other parts, and then I'll get notice out there when we we'll start that project. The uh, next category, elevator modernization. Uh, the elevator consulting is currently working on draft design at this time. The uh, emergency health projects on the Santa Fe building. Uh, today we are starting the reroute up on the 13th floor. And we, once that's completed, hopefully by Friday, weather permitting, uh, then we just have a few little small items in there to complete that entire building. The Sheriff's Administration uh, Hail Damage Project is being completed on the roofing. Uh, we do have a finer, um, a few minor areas still lacking work, uh, being the EFA system and interior ceiling tile replacements. Your next page being the uh, non-emergency projects. Items one through eight, David Harder and I are currently preparing to work with the Gordian Group out of Lubbock in order to uh, work with them to receive the cost back to, to bring that to the Commissioner's Court for approval. Item number nine, I know we've talked about this. I do need direction to the court if you're going to pursue that. If not, then uh, we'll remove that from the project list. Item number 10 through 19, I've put on hold at this time. We're still waiting some information back on items 15 through 19 from the insurance company, but uh, just waiting to hear back uh, from the fair on what they find out before we proceed forward through these buildings. The next category, uh, the Sheriff's Department uh, Correctional Center Wasteline Project, uh, we have completed it. We're waiting on a few closeout items and the final invoice from the contractor there. Still anticipating hopefully to come in around five to six thousand dollars under what I project as a project cost. Fire station three, uh, we present to you this morning, or David does, uh, some real estate property answers. The next category being the Excel Energy Retro Commissioning, uh, what reports you have right there, this has changed. I worked with uh, the Wellman Group, Mr. Greg Parker out of Houston the other day. We've established the guidelines and what we need to do to proceed forth from here. I've been working with Mr. Dempsey from the Sheriff's Department and uh, some of my staff members were gathering the last of the information. I'll be preparing this. Uh, Commissioner Mon, you were Judge Pro June at that time that I visited with David about this. If you don't mind, I'm going to come to you and ask you that you please sign the uh, letter of authorization and the uh, other required documents once I have them all compiled. Then we'll present that back to Excel and Roman Company. The uh, Excel Energy uh, Rebate Program with Efficiency Energy Solutions, we completed inspections on the Santa Fe District Courts, County Library, Downtown Sheriff's Administration, these were the four eligible buildings. Uh, the next item is a new project that has come up due to the concerns of some elected officials on the district court's property across the street. I've included this in my project report just to let you know that I started some labor work on this. I've established a three phase project. The first phase will be for me to evaluate the assessment on the lighting for the district court's perimeter side lighting over there to land the parking lot uh, on the east side of the property right there. This is first phase one is kind of a two different step project. I'll do an assessment. I will bring that information to Commissioner Kelly and then I'll be looking to bring that to the court on what I find out. Uh, Mike, can I ask a yes, question there? Sure, Commissioner, yes. what is the concern that they have on the property? Well, they've had some issues over there with the auto damages and breaking. The lighting over there is not not real good. It's not. Uh, not sure. This happened two weeks ago. I was contacted by the judges and the people in that building. Uh, somebody went through the parking lot, slashed a bunch of tires. Uh, they also went down Sixth Street. Uh, so there, there is a huge concern of who was in the parking lot, what happened over there. Um, they're also concerned that there are several of them that work late into the evening hours or coming early and there is no park there is no lighting whatsoever on that in that parking lot um, and uh, they're walking out there in the middle of the night and dark 
Yeah, I discussed uh, this with, with Mike about, you know, a lot of these construction sites at night, they have these portable lighting, and I'm just kind of wondering if maybe something like that might be an option rather than having permanent lighting in there. I'm going to pursue both those avenues in order to bring the cost back to the commissioner's court. Uh, option A, uh, portable lighting, uh, looking what we need to do to, man to manage that if that is the direction the court chooses to take. The other lighting uh, identified as permanent, uh, what we've done is I'm going to go back to a design that we looked at back in 1991 where we can put lighting on the building but remove it if anything or anything is doing it. I'll bring both of those okay. calls back. Right, well, that's not, I just hate to see it put permanent uh, yeah. light poles up there because we don't know what's going to happen. Here. And uh, the lighting that I was looking to do was go back on top of the building uh, from your top parapets looking down onto the parking lot. Mm -hmm. We had initiated that project years ago. Uh, the commissioner court at that time elected not to look for us moving calls. Hang but, on now. <laughs> Y'all were not still a valid question with the cost. Yeah. Um, so since this is not a budgeted project, where where are the dollar amounts? Coming? I'm just bringing this just giving the problem, I'm just like giving the problem <laughs> to you what I've been asked to do. Uh, phase two of the project is to look at the camera situation of what could be put around the parking lot Jason. And I was going to be working on that with Nick, uh, with the judges and the Rails the Sheriff's Department. Maybe we could share some funds out of their budget. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. In phase three, knowing what happens on phase two, I will initiate the assessment. How do we get cameras on the park? If that's the direction that they, what they look to do. So it's in the very early stages right now, just to try to get the project going, get some late work, because I know y'all are going to need these calls. How soon do you move forward? Uh, I have uh, spoken to Randall Sims regarding this matter and a few of the district judges. I hope that they come to the commissioner's court and present their case to y'all as well. We're just doing the legwork to try to help get some costs. It seems um, just on the surface, it seems pretty extreme in terms of what we're looking at for a particular incident that wasn't unique to Potter County. It sounds like it occurred at other locations. Yes. So, yeah. interesting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Number six, no action taken. Okay. Item number seven, the resolution JAG grant program to consider and act upon resolution authorizing Sheriff Thomas to act as the county's representative in all matters pertaining to Park County's participation in the JAG grant program. Sure. This is the same JAG grant we bring to you each year, the justice assistance grant that is shared with us in the uh, city of Bernal just to help with the crime rate and that kind of stuff. It can only be used on uh, law enforcement items. We let you totally run this program? It's like an end of the last four years. Really? Yeah. Sheriff, what are some of the things that we purchased from this grant? Think uh, of the ballistic vests? Anything that we can use, we use the protagers and those kind of things. It has to be used for law enforcement. Ammunition so type? It's not something that I can use on the correction side, it has to go into the line inside. It has to be built, built for it. Um, the booty ammunition would probably be kind of questionable because we do have seals out there that carry And we'll be using that. Treasure birds, particularly on water, has to be used for it. But it's, you know, the first one we got when I first got here was 600,000, and now we're down to 51. So. Every little bit helps with this, especially with the best. We've also applied for another grant uh, for the Justice uh, Division as well and, uh, for best. Uh, we don't pay half of the best. And so we've applied for that. We've also included the constables in that. And all they had to do was write a policy. It could be a one line sentence that says that they have a, a uh, policy that says they wear the best all the time. We have one of them uh, that submitted that to us, so we are in the running for that. Hopefully, we'll go on. As far as this grant, this is the same one we've always had. The one that uh, submitted is that because they didn't have the critical uh, uh, equipment or, and the rest of it did, or is that not the. Good name to that. I'll let you know. So, we're saying 
No, we didn't need it or we might have already have a plan. And I think we approved one or two during the budget session. We tried to remember. And then that might be that might be <coughs> I mean, we we approve the resolution authorizing Sheriff Thomas to act as the county representative. Second. Second. In the Jack Ray. Thank you. All those in favor? Pass it fine, sir. Okay, item number eight to consider an act upon the purchase of DocuWare. Uh, DocuWare scanner and server licensing in order to uh, change the paper system in the voter registration to electronic storage and file uh, retrieval, retrieval system. Uh, DocuWare is purchased from the Toshiba Business Solutions from DIR contract under <coughs> DIR SDD, sounds like a disease, uh, 1440 to transport funds within the 236 election budget to a 237 voter registration budget as per the requirements of the auditor. Total transfer of $35,885.48. Morning. Excuse Please. my comment. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Um, we're asking to move some money from one fund that we were budgeted for to another for the purpose of changing to an electronic system. We're currently on a shuck system, which is a little envelopes. Um, that contain each individual voter's information. So if someone registered to vote in 1940, we have their registration in this envelope from 1940 along with every time they change their name or change their address or anything else. And those are, are all in filing cabinets um, in our office, which would be over 51,000, right now we have 53,300 registered voters. So what we would like to be able to do is scan those documents so we can access them electronically and make our changes and keep everything electronically. I don't believe it was done. In 2004, the state legislature made it legal for us to change this to an electronic system. At that time, it wasn't done, it wasn't done up to this point, most likely because we were waiting for a roadmap. Other counties that had done this and a system that they worked at King's County, and we believe we found that with DocuWare. So what we're asking for today is to move um, some funds over within my budget for the purchase of this. I think that uh, uh, so I'm going to pull out the land for, for a young one to bring us into the 21st century. And uh, we've been having this sort of archaic system for quite some time. And uh, it's just it's amazing how it really worked in that, that, that process of hard copy the paper and rules. Went up there and just visualized, saw what they were doing. It was amazing. I was remembering back in the uh, Andy Griffin 45 days. At, uh, <laughs> 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 the police department used to use that system uh, until I retired, and they finally went to Let's see. get rid of the machine. How long do you get before you approve this? How long do you think it would uh, take to uh, get rid of all those shocks? Oh, that is the question of the hour. Um, we, we're hoping to be able to get the system in place where we can begin in June, and since summer is such a slow time, we'll be all hands on deck. And we'll be looking at hiring extra people for that? It's possible, but what we want to try to do is see how far we can get. And if we had to put on a temporary, I'd like to actually delay that until January, so I could potentially throw that under another Chapter 19 okay. cycle in order to be able to use as much of Chapter 19 and for this is possible. There is a potential, you're, you're never supposed to vote on a change knowing that chapter 19 will pay off, but we have, we're estimating approximately 20,000 of this 35,000 that potentially could be reimbursed through the state through chapter 19. Hey, Carrie, can you explain the transfers from the fund balance? It looks like there's two line items trans, uh, from fund balance, one in the amount of 35 well, both 35885 Can you explain where that money's coming from? Well, it's two separate funds. We have Fund 236, which is our elections fund, and that's where the funds currently reside, and we need to move them to a voter registration fund, which is Fund 237. And the 236, the elections fund, that's a fund balance? Uh, um, their actual fund balance right now is 372000 and what was the intent of that money? Um, kind of out
allocated, if you will, with the 200 and the original 372959. Citizens who live outside the, the 
city have to pay eighteen dollars a year fee in order to use the city libraries. But I haven't gotten any information back what that cost is still. So I'm gonna pull that one for now. So those other two I suggest. I think you have one. Yeah, I'd like to see us maybe uh, uh, help the uh, kids that uh, need to get into the 4 H programs. Uh, I think it's just like 25 bucks a year is all that uh, costs for them to get into those programs. So I'd like to maybe uh, put uh, set aside some funds for that purpose. And I also suggested the Employee Appreciation Committee um, as a potential option. How much are we looking at again? How much do we already give uh, extension for that registration or scholarships? What? And I might just just uh, say I. I don't think we've used all those those money as we've given in the past. And the other thing, you know, we started last what spring or summer to have preview and in program. And any person or any youth that she gets in are free. So we don't have to pay her. So I don't know how much we need all right. How much of that do we use a year? Uh, this was our first year. I know there were a couple on this side. like if we uh, did something like 2500 for the volunteer fire 2000 for the sheriff's uh, citizens academy and 500 for employees i think any of it would be welcome commissioner since you received the uh, donation i'm certainly you know, taking your lead on the recommendation you presenting on behalf of the court I hate to turn down money. <laughs> and I can't believe I'm standing up here, but on our Citizens Academy, our meals that we do each week are donated to us. The only one we would use that really for is our end of year uh, graduation that we have. And that's usually right around a thousand dollars that we end up spending. Um, so I would be, you know, I mean, I know, I don't know if it carry over or whatever, but I would be willing to donate back to that. Let's all have that thousand dollars to give us something else. I, mean, I think the employee uh, deal that you guys do is, is tremendous, and I think that's a that's such a good deal that has been countywide. And I would just I would prefer that go to that if, if that's okay with y'all. I mean, I don't like I said I don't want to turn away money, but uh, that's just one a one time fee that we have every year. The other twelve weeks are are always donated. Now, we even have citizens that have been through our academy that bring. Um, that just want to cook for us. And so, um, anyway, I just want to throw that out. Thank you, Sheriff. Appreciate that. And we're really glad they accepted on behalf of the employees. How much does uh, each of those turnout suits cost you? Our structural turnouts are running about $2,500 a set. Our wildland sets are running about $1,000 total. Rough numbers. What are we going to do? 
don't we uh, why don't we give them additional five hundred? Give us the uh, the five hundred. That's yeah. the appreciation. Okay. So be thousand for the appreciation dinner. Three thousand to the uh, volunteer in the fire department. Formal motion. I'll make that in the form of motion. Yeah. I'll second. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I will yeah. second that. Yeah. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> You're so quiet over there. <laughs> So it's three, one. And, and one. And one. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 And it should be named after you, Sherry. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now, item number 10, the commissioner's uh, court meeting scheduled for Monday of the holiday to adopt a policy stating that in the event of a regular scheduled meeting of the court called on a holiday, the meeting will be postponed to the next business day, effective with the meeting of uh, May 26, 2014, or to take any action action as necessary. This is something we need to uh, to take it. We've had both ways in the past and I just thought the easiest, since the question didn't come up about it, I just thought the easiest way to do it was just kind of recognize what really kind of become tradition anyway is that that when meeting falls on Monday, we'll just have next business. And that way, I don't think that's formal policy stated anywhere, but that'll, but that'll, that'll take care of it. Well, I like when coming I like when uh, Christmas falls on Tuesday, you know, we have an issue there. And it will this year, or will, yeah. well, oh no, I'm sorry, the 22nd will be. Well, that's why I say oh. next business. Well, what I'm asking, oh, okay, so we have to cover the. Uh, yeah, this generally only happens during Christmas holidays and right around the holidays. So if Christmas falls on a Monday, we're going to have the meeting Tuesday, is that what you're saying? Okay. Or depending, or depending on actually it would be Wednesday, I think. Wednesday. So we would have Tuesday off. But whatever the next business day is after that that uh, meeting oh, day right. schedule would be is when we would have to meet. Wouldn't it be just appropriate to monitor that as time allows? Let's make the change. I, you can do whatever you want. I just I just sure. thought of a simple policy that you wouldn't have to worry about. It wouldn't be simple, trust me. <laughs> He's had things well, 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 running see, away. See, in, in the legal world, when we have a when we when when an event a new date occurs on policy. That's what we do. Is we say, you know, there's a rule that says next business day is when you turn something in. If that business, you know, the due date happens to fall on a weekend or a holiday. So I'm just kind of, I kind of stole that. Idea. But if you want to deal with case by case basis, that's fine with me. I think the challenge is who's monitoring that schedule and um, the date of the way the courts fall. Um, well, okay. you're, you're assuming that we can follow it. I'll play the defense advocate. And I'm, I'm, I guess I'm speaking in terms of placement on the agenda, not who is aware when court but is see, in session. There's nothing to monitor. I mean, if I, if I look up and see the, the, the Christmas day is our commission's court meeting, then the next business day is when the meeting is. I mean, it's... it's well, I'm going to hate to show up here on Tuesday. That's after Christmas on Monday. Now, having said that, there's nothing that prevents you from meeting. You can keep it on Monday if Monday is Christmas if you want to. I mean, it's Why whatever the court wants to do. So, 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 so what, what, what is the, uh, the issue? What is the argument, I guess, uh, when you say monitor? But uh, how are you going to Sure. I put in a request in um, late March, possibly uh, early April, indicating that I recognized that the court would fall on holiday. So I just took that upon my own personal interest to inform the judge's office and say, you might put an agenda item on just for the sake of everybody's schedule so that we know well in advance. So I did that on behalf of the court and just initiating that question. Okay. That did not happen, and it really parallels with an issue Commissioner Kelly had in terms of his agenda item. So then I followed up and said, I think this failed to get on the agenda. And again, I try to be mindful of everyone's schedule. And so now it is on the agenda and it's now the next court. And it's fine, but I think that's my kind of question behind the scenes is who is monitoring the upcoming schedule? And I just asked the question on behalf of the court because I have been noticed this, that it would fall on a holiday. Person, I think this is a really good 
policy change. To me, it's clear. So next business. And I think that big uh, turn. That's okay. Also, but uh, it sounds like there would be if if there would be uh, an entity in office that would monitor it. It would be the judge's office, and uh, it would be the. Uh, and that did not happen so. in this situation, Commissioner, which is why it's on the agenda now for the next board. And, and again, I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be contrary like that. I just thought well, let's go I was trying to make I make sure that probably didn't happen. Did that's right. legitimate that's a legitimate question. Okay. okay, so where are we? Did you need it to sign? Um, I'll make a motion. I move that we adopt the policy stating that the in the event a regularly scheduled meeting of the court falls on a holiday. The meeting will be postponed to the next business day. Effective with the meeting of May 26, 2014. Can I have a second? I second. You have a second? All in favor? All opposed? <coughs> Passes 3 2. Okay, item number 11, Mutual Aid Agreement, National Park Service consider and act upon approving an agreement between the National Park Service and the Park County for mutual aid and firefighting assistance. So much needs this weekend. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody oppose to this? No. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's implied because <laughs> that occurred yesterday. <laughs> this agreement basically says that if the Park Service does not any situation we will go and help them and if we need them to come and help us they'll come and help us it's what's been going on for years they're just getting it very formalized okay well it's no question this is a much needed uh, agreement and uh, i don't know any on this uh, commission or in this room is going to be against this so. the only question that I'm, I'm sure the only question that i have is how does this fall in line with the mutual aid agreement that kevin starbuck came and spoke to the court in terms of keeping track of how many hours um, a respective county provided support. That the, the federal right. allocation for the FEMA funds is right. how I understand it. I just don't know how this kind of marries into that bigger document. That always gets to be a mess. The, uh, the mutual aid agreement that Kevin brought to us would pertain to all of the counties, and this pertains specifically to the National Park Service. Okay. So this is just with the National Park Service. It doesn't include other agencies of the United States Department of Interior, such as BLM. Correct. I believe we approve the mutual aid agreement with the National Park Service. Second. Motion to approve and second all in favor. It passes by the jury. Thank you. Thank you. Number 12, the uh, tax increment reinvestment zone, tiers number one, Park County Board Representation. Consider an act upon appointing Park County res uh, representatives to vacancies on the tier number one uh, board of directors. Um, I mean, this is something that we've been <laughs> doing for quite some time. How many positions are there? Are three positions are open. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. I have my own, but uh, the rest of the commission, uh, please feel free to. It was a representation. I, I, I had suggested Nick Ward uh, some time ago, a couple of sessions ago. And then in terms of nominations that we received, um, I think Malin had suggested Gary Elliott as well. So I just want to make it public okay. in terms of everything that I have. And I also mentioned the name of Janie Singleton. Janie's uh, been a community leader for quite a number of years. And I think also that this board uh, needs to be, have a representative, not that it has to, but somebody from the commission. And uh, one of the commissioners has let it not be known to me that he would be willing to serve. And that is? Commissioner Vaughn, I'm sorry. Oh, no, <laughs> Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner Church. <laughs> uh, I think that's, what, that's, that's fine. Um, uh, does anything preclude having more than one elected official? on the board no not really i think what makes this board unique is that um striving to have the citizen involvement yeah. um so i think it does get a little weighted and, and again just from my perspective 
uh, if you have. Uh, I think that uh, I, I had uh, presented this uh, individual's name some time ago, a couple years ago, and that's Judge Jones from um, the court. So not only because of the elected official, but also a tremendous involvement in community affairs. Uh, so I thought I think it would be good to try to get a demographic from every quadrant of the community. So I represent uh, Judge Jones as a, uh, a request to become a serious board as well. I'd like to. Uh, <clears throat> Put uh, Kevin Nelson's name in, in the nomination. He's an attorney. His specialty is oil and gas law, and real estate, and business trans transactions. He uh, owns the Amarillo building on the corner of Polk and Third. Does live here in Potter County. Thank you. Excellent. And let me throw this out uh, as a as to you, Commissioner Kelly, because I served on the initial board, but uh, what value added it does that holding one of those positions on the materials board itself, as far as uh, information that could be brought back to this court, this county of individual, prior to that those decisions already have been made. I'm trying to, to, yeah, to try to uh, identify uh, a parallel uh, that's, a, that's a tough thing to answer because uh, you really don't know what's going to happen until it happens. You know, you can get a, we can give you an agenda. I mean, you get an agenda to, to see what the action is going to be taking place for that particular reason. But, you know, you, you really don't know what happens until after it happens. So are those decisions uh, principally made on the, uh, the tourist board out of that uh, to bring back to the court not only the, uh, the county but also the city? Or is there another uh, committee evolution there that those decisions are, are massaged and, and well, there are other committees the that, yeah, There are other committees and uh, other branches of the, the committee that are involved in that that uh, have you know, suggestions, but the final decision is made by the Tim Court. So that would be uh, those sitting on that position, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Commissioner, to your question, the way that I understand the tiers uh, agreement, because I read that in some detail coming on to the court, is that uh, the tiers board would make the decision it would then be funneled through the commission for um, feedback and kind of a nod or, or discussion if you will and then it would go to the city commission for the vote uh, that is traditionally not what happens quite honestly commissioner uh, it often goes to the city vote and, and we're made aware uh, either by the agenda or public media communication is what's happened frequently and um, I've sat in on those tiers meeting just from a public perspective, from an open meetings, and um, the perception is, you know, there's a little discussion, but there is something certainly that is, there are someone, some entities, and maybe it is these other boards that exist, that is making a recommendation, probably is the best word to use, making a recommendation to the tiers board who then votes on it. So uh, my interest is in who it is making that recommendation, so that Potter County is certainly aligned with what's happening. We are the biggest investor. In so is it, so I guess what I'm trying to get, is, is there another committee that uh, we may need to yet, and, and find out, uh, be a part of prior to, uh, and of course, I'm, I'm weighing heavily upon you, Commissioner Kelly, is that? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, there are other committees, but uh, we don't serve on those other committees. I mean, I, we don't have a record from the, for those other committees. So when the tiers vote, is it pretty much a done deal already? I mean, uh, he, it, as a recommendation is brought to the tiers, is it is it fairly uh, conceivable to, to to state that that is already? Well, you know, I have been on that board for uh, three years, and uh, pretty much, yeah, I have to say, yeah. Thank I'm you for saying that. I'm going to be honest with you. you. So, what is the value added this? Other than an advisory capacity that you use, we're taking notes and bringing back. I mean, there's, there's, uh, if, if there's objection there, and there has been some, there has been some, but uh, basically, uh, if you want to use rubber stamp, uh, probably it's not a, a bad, or I mean, but basically, the decisions that I think are being made are pretty much they're good decisions um, that, that are going to benefit the downtown in that particular uh, tiers area. I mean, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, there's going to be people that think opposite of that, but uh, the, the part, the time that I've been on there, I think uh, we've made some good decisions. And that certainly is, is part of my concern, Commissioner Vaughn, and, and certainly not in reference to who we appoint to sit on the tiers board. I think each one of these candidates would be exceptional. 
Potter County would really be blessed to have any of them, quite honestly. But from my perspective, Potter County is the biggest taxi entity, kind of um, uh, upping the ante, if you will. We are paying the most in the fund, and we have the least to say, whether we like it or not. That is currently what's happening. And so by the time it gets presented to the tiers board, um, it does appear that the decision has been made, and Potter County will be secondary to that. And I think it's up to this commission to take that charge. If that is indeed the case, then you need good people to be on on this, uh, this board, and so, well, I agree, but my question remains, regardless of whether the, who the qualification of the people are very proactive to on board, if it's just a matter of, of, of a nodding of agreement that it's already been decided, or do you have some decisive uh, discussion and debate prior to that decision moving forward? Um, the debate can take place at the beginning, you know? You can certainly voice your opinion or your objection or whatever you want there to be. Um, I want to tell you, I mean, it's, it's uh, certainly available for you to do that. Okay. And Commissioner, maybe the question should be asked to the city uh, and the city manager and, and the mayor or a combination thereof if it is a concern. And it's certainly a concern that I have and I'd be willing to join that meeting um, with Commissioner Kelly or, or whomever would like to go, another commissioner, but it is a valid question. Well, my just some of my concerns, my my suggestion of the uh, of the individual still stands. Um we've got uh, one, two, three, six, four, five, six. Six people. I would uh, be my recommendation that the Commissioner Church serve on that and Nick Ward serve on it and Judge Jones. My third selection. Anybody have something different that they want to? I would like to see at least one community person. Well, uh, Nick Ward's a community person. He you know, works for the county. I think he is. Uh, I think he'd be a good representative. Yeah, I think he'll be a good representative as far as the, the skill sets and, and yeah. the representatives. Well, I disagree. That's well, you know, Mr. Nelson has property downtown. I think he'd be uh, certainly influenced about his property. He said he was at Third sure. Oak. I mean, that's right there. Those, those are his. Those are people at that. That's the whole county. I know that, dude. Anybody I else have any know. recommendations? Wait. Judge? I'm, I'm sorry, I. <laughs> is there a particular individual or a position that you have some uh, disagreement with uh, or one you would prefer to be on there other than the ones that are listed <laughs> Oh, yeah, take these individual okay, right. one at a time. We'll vote on those one at a time. Um, let's start with uh, Commissioner Church. All in favor? Serve on the tiers board. Okay, three to one. One, you're abstaining on assuming Commissioner Church. Yes. Okay. All right, 
uh, my aunt will serve on that committee. Um, Nick Ward, all in favor? Actually, three, two. Yes. Consider an act upon appointing the property owner. Are there any others upon the collections? No, I just each one individually is out. Oh, okay. Ones, I'm sorry. Is you? You're trying I to get fair. <laughs> Make a notice in the form of a motion, okay? We need to start over. Okay, all right, I'm going to start over. The uh, first one was uh, Leon Church. I'll make a motion that we point Leon to that tiers board. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Passes three, four, 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 four one abstention. Okay. I'm sorry, it's still three, one. Three, one, one. Okay. Would you like us to take the vote again, Julie? Do you need to see that? Okay. All those in favor? Four. Four. Three. No, one abstention. One abstention. One, 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 one name. Okay, the second one was the uh, appointment of Nick Ward. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve. Second. A motion to approve and a second. All in favor? That passes 3-2. Is it two no or two abstain? Two no. Okay. Two no. All right. And then the uh, third, we'll take Judge Jones. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we approve Judge Jones. That uh, tears court has he has he said that he can do this? Uh, initially he did. I had some day, but uh, I didn't move. Okay. I will. Uh, I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Three, two. We have our representatives for the tiers board. How long is their um, term commissioner? Is it two or years or three? Uh, three. Which is two years. Actually, it's, been, it's four years. <laughs> I've been on four years. <laughs> okay. I've been recycling. Yeah, two days. We'll read later. Yeah. Okay. Um, taken care of. Item number uh, 13, the uh, prohibition on outdoor burning, et cetera, and on renewing the ban on uh, additional, a ban for an additional 90 days. Okay. The conditions in the county are horrible. <laughs> in the area, uh, none of our weather forecasts are really, not that I'm seeing the same relief in the current weather situation. Okay. The nice thing about these is if we do get really significant rain going, which will be several, quite a bit of rain over several days, that it can be rescinded. How many can have much injection out there in the county? I don't think anybody can have injection right now. Um, Dave, the only question I have is how does this um, parallel, or, and maybe this is the next court, for any of the aerial fireworks that I'm thinking of as we now enter the summer season? I've had a couple firework vendors call to see what they can order um, and how that will work. We've got, I think we've got to get closer to the, the firework sale season before okay. we make that decision because, and I mean, that, for the practical reason mm -hmm. that we've got, you know, the drought index has got to be a certain level. Sure. We may be there. Uh, we may be there now. I didn't check the drought index today, but it's certainly not going to get any better. Yeah. But, but I think maybe if I, the next meeting, probably should start thinking about that. Because I at least I know in terms of a public they're asking questions of what they can order for the season. So I'm sure yeah. you guys have gotten those calls already. Well let's let, well, let's let's check Pat at the next meeting let's see what we're out in there. I'll put an item on the agenda at least at least give me a warning that we're going to impose a, uh you know the drought index is not, is bad enough. We at least tell them we're gonna probably impose it and maybe maybe may, may, I think we have to have that in place by June 15th, if I remember correctly. Seems like that. Something no. like that. I don't think getting this related. Sure. I haven't looked at the drought index either. We get a chart that's the energy release components, and those are at, 90, at the 97 percentile right now, which is very extreme. Okay. 
I make a motion that we approve renewing the bird ban for an additional 90 days, effective May 12, 2014, expiring August 10, 2014. Second. Motion to approve the second. All those in favor? Thank you. Hey, Pat, what, what is the appropriate percentile as far as that energy uh, that they just spoke of? Indicated it's around 90, what, 70% at this point? What is um, the two big numbers that they look at on it, I believe it's 90. I have to look again. There's two lines that they put across it, and by looking at historical data, they know that when the when the fuels are in that condition, that we're very subject to very large fires, and we're right up at the very top. Of so the higher percentile, the more uh, the worse conditions are. Yes, okay. the worse conditions. I've got them on my phone and my email. Okay, but okay. okay. I can. Wait. <clears throat> kind of on the same subject, we need to be on the lookout because uh, it appears the fireworks lobby wants to take this decision of whether or not to ban fireworks away from the counties. I'd like to get to the states. I need to watch that they don't. Yeah. I don't think the state will do it. They want to throw the county off. That's not a bad guy. The state has so many variations. What's what's happening in East Texas? Oh, yeah. We have to keep it. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Commissioner, when y'all are, if the state does that, if, if they're going to do it anyway, if at least y'all can influence to make it a regional, somehow broken down by regional areas at least for regional districts. Item fourteen: Tax abatement guidelines and criteria to consider and act upon renewing. The county's guidelines and criteria for tax abatement agreements and the application for tax abatement and to take any action necessary. How did this get on the equipment for this? Well, and I'll tell you what happened. I got a call from the ADDC a week and a half ago, and evidently they had some project in the pipeline that they're, they're bringing to you guys. And, and they said they either, I didn't understand they either have or were going to talk to each of you individually about it. And so, what, what, in order for us to, now, you know, depending on where it is and what it is, we might be able to just go along with the, uh, with the city's, uh, hang on the city's guidelines, but we, we need to adopt our own guidelines for our own projects, and those expire, and those expire in part. So, so I, I'm just setting up the, kind of setting the stage, but I, I think more information is coming from AEDC about the other projects they have. So, so something is on the uh, uh, horizon, yeah. I guess, for them to exactly. explain it. Uh, exactly. And, something and, there. and so I, I've done, I, I just took our, first I just did our, took our, the ones that expired in March and and just uh, kind of changed dates basically. And then the more I looked at them, well, this was later the day, Friday, the, the more I thought they were, they were really more complicated than we needed to be because I think we, I borrowed them from. Uh, different sources the last time we adopted, which was a bit about two and a half years ago. And so I just went through them again and did a more simplified version, which I think I, and all I did was take out some of the language that's repetitive and uh, just some of the technical definitions and stuff like that, because it's all laid out in the statute, the tax code anyway. And and just just put those both in front of you for your consideration. You really don't, I mean, you can consider them now and and pass them in. I mean, they, by doing this, you're just telling people with tax abatement uh, who request one, this is what we have to do to get these are the minimum guidelines for tax abatement. So, uh, to that point, uh, there's no, between the last regimental contract we've had, is there any language difference between the last or the previous one we've had to this one that's before us now? No. Uh, something that's right. We added some things about it. Employment, uh, some of the particular items that we put in about the, the, the person needing the abatement has to have a certain percentage of our employees, a certain type of benefits. Uh, we, I had left those intact. If you want to change those, you're certainly welcome to do that. So, so there was no uh, uh, a presentation for an AEDC to no, mention no. some different language. No, sir. In fact, the AEDC source said you, know, you might want to just follow the cities. And I looked at the cities, and they're really I mean, they're they're there. I mean, they're they're very simple. They're about two pages. So. Well, what I can say, go ahead, Mr. I I don't want to follow 
the city for sure because uh, what affects the city sure is different than what affects the county. And whenever we give a tax abatement, it's my opinion that we certainly, an abatement benefits the company who is asking for it. Well, but how does it benefit the county? And so it has some way we have to have a two way street here. And uh, by putting in a percentage of the employees have to be in the county, I think that's good, but I'm not sure it's high enough. And the other thing that was brought to our attention down at the uh, judges and commissioners meeting in San Angelo was consider the higher paid employees like the, uh, uh, the executives and requiring some percentage of those having to live in the county because they're the ones that are going to buy the higher price homes. They're the ones that are going to have the, the higher taxes and that's what's going to you know, offset some of the tax abatement that we did. And uh, I don't know if we want to go that far. I think it's something we should consider at some point. But uh, and not only the uh, the executive, but I think that even for those for laborers, the skill sets, those individuals that actually uh, have those particular skill sets, if we are not identifiable, then why not uh, maybe try to uh, have some type of training to AC or to uh, to do some to be in those positions to, to be hired in those particular levels. I like the idea. We're requesting that they have to have often their people with health benefits. Uh, there's some really good things in here. Uh, hey, Commissioner, I reviewed the previous um, standards criteria for the abatements, the ones that expired in March, and compared them with the revised document that's pre prepared uh, for the court's approval today. And I roughly found about 23 changes to the language. There's three, Dave, that I have a, a pretty strong opinion that I think should be included in the doc in the new document that are currently not. Um, and I'm not sure how you want to do this because I'm referring to an old document. Sure. But they call got, them, and I can give you my notes as a okay. follow-up. So uh, you, you're certainly welcome to what I jotted down here. But on page three of the new document, the previous one called for what was then called C of new and existing facilities and there was language about abatement may be granted for new facilities or improvement to existing facilities. Where, where, where are you? Um, this is on a, the original document and I'm not sure that both were included in the packet. They should have, they should have gotten copies. Of, I should have gotten copies of both. Okay. So this is the first one of page three. That language is missing from the new one. And I do think that should be included. And that, that is an instance of uh, either duplication or, uh, I mean, we, we can certainly add it back in, but that's either uh, duplication or uh, covered in the statute. Oh, yeah. right. But I mean, uh -huh. you're absolutely right. That is, that needs to be part of your requirements. Yeah, and I saw that being the case day for several of the other changes. It was married into the other language. And so I, I'm, I'm following you with that strategy, but there was that that was left out. Okay. Um, and then on, I think it was still on page three, ineligible property of how you had it spelled out of, and you kind of lumped some of them together of um, aircraft and land, inventory supplies, etc. One was left out, and, and I'm not sure if it needs to be included, but I will certainly want to mention it. Any property included in the calculation of the base year value as defined. And I'm going to lean on Sherry, because I know that you calculate those base value years for our property. Do you do that? You work with Jim Childers at the appraisal district to do that? We rely on Jim to, to do all that. So just a side note, and I'll give you these just okay. so you have them. And then the one final one that I saw was missing, and it's on the last, I think it's the last page second to last page of the new document, administration. It speaks to really similar language, but it doesn't define who is doing the, the work of establishing um, the thresholds. And the previous document speaks to the chief administrator of the county shall annually determine an assessment of real and personal property comprised in the zone. Chief appraiser. It, it, it currently reads the chief appraiser of the county. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for the correction. That's how it currently reads. So I'm, I'm not sure if there's value in this, you know, you having some time for the court, and, and maybe you gentlemen have reviewed the previous document, look at the existing, or even if there's a document date that you can redline and uh, track any of your changes. So the court has sure, that. I'm, that. I'm not sure what's the best Better strategy. Like. Better be like, I'll be happy to do whatever. As I say that, the, the uh, came to me late, too yeah. late in the day right, to do a combination. And I agree, right it's um, cleaner to read, it's easier to follow, so I definitely understand the strategy. Okay. Do we want to take any action at this time, or just pass this and put it in the next other committee? Okay, we'll go ahead and pass this. would prefer that we do it today, but I told them I can't guarantee that. I mean, I, I, and I, I in fact told them, uh, knowing the court like I did, I expect they're gonna want some time to kind of digest what, what I give them on Monday, and I expect they'll take final action on the 27th. And so, that will be fine. Thank you. Item right, 15, appointment to consider and act upon the following appointment items. I'll take these all at once, or do you want to do that? All at once, okay. okay. Uh, road and bridge employment of uh, Dakota Ratliff from uh, part time to full time. Seasonal maintenance tax effective May 5th, 2014. Uh, item B, road and bridge, the employment of Roy Sandy Burkham. Seasonal road tech effective May 5th, 2014. Item C, road and bridge, the employment of Justin uh, Schaffler. Pronounce that for me. Roger. You'd love to be kidding. Okay. I, 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 oh, we're going to go with shop. <laughs> Season road maintenance and tax effective May 5th, 2014. Item D, road and bridge, the appointment of uh, Felipe Martinez Jr., summer mower, effective May 5th, 2014. Item E, the uh, employment of uh, Gary Johnson, summer mower, effective 2014, uh, May 5th, 2014. And the last item, the uh, road bridge, the termination of uh, Stephen Morris, uh, maintenance tech effective April 28, 2014. Have a motion to approve all these things. I'll make the motion to approve. Second for discussion. Just Thanks. a quick question, Roger, on uh, Dakota Ratlin transferring from part time to full time. I'm assuming there was a full time position open. You are correct. Yes, and is that one that's been open for some time? Well, no, he just retired here about two, three weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> Who was the answer? F on our list that we put in items was the one you replaced. Okay. All right. All right. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Passes by zero. Let's go uh, skip to item 20, jail count. Here we report on the Fox County Detention Center to take any action necessary. I'm giving the jail count is uh, 510, 91 of those are people. Any of children, sir? Sure. None of children, okay. Keep those counts down. Okay, back to item 16, 17, and 18. Executive session on real property. Request to sell county property to hold an executive session to deliberate the purchase, exchange, or value of real property where deliberation open meeting uh, would have a detrimental effect on the position of the county in negotiation with the third party pursuant to uh, section 551.072 of the Texas Government Code. Take any action uh, appropriate after the executive session. Item 17, Executive Session of Rail Property Fire Station Number 3, to hold an Executive Session to deliberate the purchase, exchange, or value of real property where deliberation is an open meeting to have a detrimental effect on the position of the county in negotiation with the third party pursuant to 551.072 Texas Government Code. Take any action, or be taking uh, action appropriate after the effective session. And item 18. Executive session cons uh, consultation with attorney to hold an executive session to consult with the county attorney regarding the warranty claims with drainage construction on Potter County Courthouse project pursuant to Texas Government Code number 
551.071, allowing a government body to conduct a private consultation with an attorney about pending or complicated litigation and be to take any action uh, after the session, after the executive session. We will close, and it is now 1044, and uh, we'll come back in a session after the executive session. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the executive session has completed. We're back in session at 10 11 15. And it should be noted at this time that there was no action taken on item 16, 17, or 18. Anything further that come before the court? I think we have one agenda item county insurance items. Okay, county insurance items, do we have any? Oh, uh, nothing new to report. Do we have any agenda uh, items to be added to the next commissioner's uh, court? The ones that we've already noted. No additional? Okay. Any further comments? We are adjourned at 1060. I'm sorry, 1160. Excuse me. Julie looked at us, so I knew. Excuse me. Oh my God. Thank you for.